What's up, I'm a Power Asker. Today's video, we're looking at getting greasy, meaning we're greasing the front end of this bad boy. I have put new drag link in, new tie rod in, new, tie, new ball joints, and so it's time to grease up all the fittings. So let's get on with where are they all located. Then we'll go into detail on what to look for. Okay, we're on the driver's side. Let's go over real quick where they're all located. As we go through the video, you'll see them more closer in detail. Start out with, let's come off the pitman arm right there, which comes off your steering box right there. It comes down right there, and you can see the grease fitting right there. Again, more detail about that one later, but you've got one on the end of your drag link off the pitman arm. Upper ball joint right there is coming off of your sway bar, grease fitting there. Come down here, you got your tie rod comes right there, but wait a minute. That is a nut. That's not a grease fitting, but it's because the grease fitting is down here at the bottom. It comes right down there it is and oftentimes you will have one on your lower ball joint as well these do not have it but again more about that later so now we're over here on the passenger side we got again upper ball joint sway bar in link here come down drag link but again that one's on the bottom right here down here we have your tie rod in again on the bottom down here right there's your upper ball joint come on down there's your u joint axle shaft knuckle and then you come right there is your lower ball joint now oftentimes what you gotta look for there is right on the very edge of your lower ball joint you will have a what looks like a flathead screw so to speak those particular style grease fittings take the needle style grease injector and what you'll do is you'll take the needle come in from this angle here like right over top of your tie rod and you'll inject the grease into the edge of it then in some ball joints, you'll have the grease fitting right in the top middle of that. Now, if you're putting in new ball joints, be super careful about that. Because oftentimes putting in a new ball joint in the lower end, that's a greasable style, but it has the grease fitting in the middle of it. This is your axle here, and this is your U-joint. These ears on the U-joints spin and rotate. So if you've got one of those fittings right there and you put it in, it's too tall. This will come around, take out that, ball, uh, take out that grease fitting. It will hit it, and it will break it, and, well, you just got a problem. So pay very close attention to that. Sometimes you gotta go to the 90 degree style fitting that's kind of kicked back this way, or the super short style for um, the grease fitting, the, the regular style Zerk fittings like you see these right here. These right here is like the standards, and they have another set that's really, really short. The only thing they do is shorten the shoulder here. Then you have the needle style, which goes right to the edge right there. I prefer the needle styles on these. These particular ball joints are the non-greasable lowers. And of course, we have the greasable uppers. So pay attention to that. You'll have the grease fitting either here in the middle or right there. If you happen to have the one that's in the middle right there, and it's not the 90 degree style, 90 degrees means they'll come up this way and bend back at you to where you can pop your grease fitting in there. You will have to pull all this crap off right here, pull the axle, and come in from the top to grease it. Hopefully, you don't have that style because they're a total pain in the tail just to do a little preventive maintenance. So keep an eye out for that. Let's show you an example of a ball joint that has the grease fitting in the edge. Right there in the edge of that ball joint, you can see that hole. There was a grease fitting there, but whenever I put the new ball joints in, I have to take that particular fitting out because otherwise it'll scar up the lower C if you try to press it out, and you don't want to do that. But that's another video, and I can link it up for you guys to check it out. So you squeeze the handle on the grease gun. It comes right down the tube right there through that tip, at that little tiny tip right there. Presses on that fitting because you're forcing it on there and holding it tightly. It forces it through that grease fitting into the ball joint and greases everything up. And you've got many times too, you've got uh, lots of U-joints uses that same fitting. So what I suggest is that get you one of these grease tips on its own grease gun and let it ride. Why do I say that? Because that tip right there is a pain to put together. You're supposed to be able to pull that back right there and pop that tip out of there. But you know what? I think that one has now permanently installed itself and it's not coming out. So I've got a separate grease gun, the one that snaps here onto the regular Zerg fittings. And I'll just leave that one in place because I'm tired of fighting it. Now here on the passenger side, you may have to take your, wheel, take your wheel and cut it hard driver because your grease fitting here on the drag link is sitting right above your tie rod so if you're sitting like where your wheels are sitting straight that grease fitting is not very accessible you can see right here that you know i was getting all into the tie rod here so i turned the wheel hard driver which allows me to bring my grease fitting straight up this way now what you see in there is technically i went a little too much grease 
but here's what you got to watch for. As you're pumping it up, this boot right here is going to swell or should swell. And I kept pumping it, pumping it, waiting for it to swell. I'm like, heck, that's a lot of grease inside there. Then all of a sudden, it started shooting out here. Oftentimes, with new ball joints, tie rod ends, and whatever that has this style boot, with new parts, that dust boot or grease seal, whatever you want to call it, is pretty daggone stiff and rigid. So not all the time will the grease cause it to swell. But as soon as you see that shoot out like that, you know right there, stop. And off to the next one. Now let's get that tie rod right there. Hopefully this boot is swell so you can see on camera what I'm looking for. Okay, hook up your grease and start pumping slowly. Now keep looking all the way around your boot, around through here, because sometimes if you look right here, you're not going to see it, but if you look on the back side, you might see it swell. So just keep an eye on as you're pumping it for that boot to swell a little bit so you know when to stop. And sometimes it can be extremely, extremely subtle when it does. I'm starting to see it right there just a little bit. So, okay, we're good. Because at this point, if we put too much, keep pumping the grease, we're going to shoot it out through here. And that's what you really don't want to do because that allows a path of water, other debris to creep up inside there. But on the flip side of that too, you know, if it's got like this one up here where it popped a little bit of grease out, if you've got grease in there, it should prevent anything from going in. But honestly, I kind of play by the rule of thumb of trying to prevent the grease coming out to begin with. So take your pick on your line of thought on how you want to feel about that. But look at it like this. If you go out wheeling, having a good time, and you're, especially if you're playing in water, one thing you can never go wrong by doing is going around checking everything. You know, make sure you didn't get any uh, water into the differentials. Make sure, you know, all your, look around here, see if you've got any kind of, you know, openings in the boots or whatever in case you snag a limb rock or something now right above these two right here you got your drag link you got your tie rod and ball joint here and come right over here then you got your end link for your sway bar so pump a little grease into that and be sure again watch your cut back here for the swelling so the driver's side of this jk we've got the ball joint here you can see i've already pumped a little grease to it and once you got to watch about your ball joints as you're pumping the grease into them this cup right here is super super rigid it may not swell. So as you're pumping the grease into it, what you might see is that cup right there. It might actually push downward just a minuscule amount. Think about greasing up ball joints, uh, tie rod ends, stuff like that. Oftentimes when I keep saying that your cup's going to swell or this or that, the movement is so, so minute. You really, really got to pay attention. And this upper ball joint is one of the prime examples because that cup is super rigid. It's not going to swell. So what you got to watch is that cup will actually move downward just, I mean, we're talking like a 64th of an inch or so before it bottoms out onto the uh, knuckle itself. So it's super, super subtle. So pay close attention to it, have good light, and which will help you out. I mean, I've done this enough times. I've seen that cup move a little bit when I was pumping the grease to it. So keep an eye on that. Then, of course, you got your um, tie rod here. A tie rod. Your, uh, uh, golly, duh, moment. Sway bar, that's it. I can get it. So now, grease up a sway bar. You don't have one on the bottom here because that's just a rubber bushing. And over here, you got your tie rod. There's no drag, the drag link to come over here. Why? Because the drag link comes off of your steering box here. There's your pitman arm here. And it shoots all the way across to the passenger side. So whenever you turn your steering wheel, that pitman arm right there pushes back and forth off the gearbox here and it pushes your drag link over there pushes your knuckle backwards and forth therefore connects your tie rod over to this one which turns it back and forth as well and a partridge in a pear tree yeah oh also don't forget since we're talking about pitman arm off that drag link right there you got you another grease fitting and since we're talking about the drag link pitman arm and all that fun stuff there's your grease fitting and right above that's the cup Pay attention to the cup. Watch it sway real, real, real lightly. Let's see. Yeah, the cup is a little bit flexible. It might actually be able to see it move. We'll see here in a moment. I've got you guys set up on the drag link now where it comes off the pitman arm. Pop your grease on there. Got it right here because you guys can't see it. 
and that camera angle because I want you guys to see the cup. Don't worry about the grease fitting, just make sure it's not leaking as you pump it. Okay, let's hopefully see that cup swell. And watch the top of it, watch the sides of it, just any angle you can for any subtle movement. Because once you see it move, stop. Now somebody's going to ask, well, how many squeezes per pace is it? Well, you know what? I really can't tell you because it kind of differs, honestly. Your grease guns depend on the volume of grease it pushes whenever you pump it, how much grease is in the joint to begin with. There's so many, too many variables for me to tell you, but 10 squeezes and this right here, I can't do that because you just have to pay attention to the cup to watch it swell. Okay, what you guys don't see is right back here. I think I'm starting to get a little, I'm getting a little movement back here. I'm gonna see if I can see it right here and hopefully you guys can. I'm actually breaking my own rule because once I see it move, I stop, but I want you guys to see it. Right there, I'm seeing just a little subtle movement. Okay, I'm gonna do one more squeeze and hopefully you guys can see it. Yep, right there. Ew, gross. Slimy. If y'all wonder what I'm using, some of you guys out there may know what that right there is. It's that red, tacky, sticky stuff. Why? Because this stuff is super impervious to water. And that's very good for Jeep stuff. So look right there, I got all that slimy booger stuff hanging off right there. Looks like a big string of red snot with a bad sinus infection. Take your rag, clean off the end of it. And we have that done. So now we're at the sway bar end link. And the good thing about these, they're kind of accordion style. So you should be able to see that boot swell a little bit. As soon as you start pushing on your grease gun, you'll notice your tip will push back and it'll kind of lock itself in place. But if you get a little bit of seepage coming out right there, push into it to make sure your force is inside the zerk fitting. Okay, watch that cup, the accordion right there. Right there, it started moving. There it is. One thing about your grease feeding, be sure you wipe them off if you got no mud debris or anything like that before you even put your grease gun on there. So otherwise, you're going to inject junk inside there. And you'll also notice after I got that grease on there, it actually acted like a uh, cleaner to help the clean up it no more. But I did wipe that off before we did anything. So everyone remember something. Even though this is a JK, this also follows suit with your TJs, WJs, TJs. Any of your coil spring front ends may have these exact same grease fittings. So, just because I did this on this rig, check your front end for the same thing. The greasing procedure is going to be the same. I'll, now, some of your high dollar rigs and some of your really built rigs, your, if you've got Heim joints or things like that, you're going to have, you may have grease fittings on those. That, this is just a basically, I'm going to say basically, stock front end that has basically your stock grease fittings and such. So, if you've got a built rig with Heim joints and things like that, you're going to have separate uh, grease fittings for those, possibly. Not all the time. So everyone, if you got something out of this video, you enjoyed it, hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, leave us cool comments down below. Peace. Later, y'all.